You know, so folks, I, uh, I've had this tractor for like a year and a half and have put um, less than an hour on it. You know, I invested a lot of my own capital and I've had it tied up in this thing ever since. And I, I just keep trying to find things to do with it. But every time a project comes up, I reach for a different tractor. I, I, I use a 1025, I use a Summit now, I use a big Kubota, I use a skid steer, I use a 2038. I use other tractors that I've had over the last year and a half, the 4720. And so I, I guess I wanted to kind of go through why that is, um, give you my take on it. And I've done a lot of videos on Kubota and John Deere and everything else, but I feel like it's probably worth you listening to if you're in the market for one of these so you can make the most informed decision possible. Maybe it's still the solution for you, but maybe after hearing what I have to say, you're looking in a different direction. All right, so a little backstory. Number one, we bought this spring of 21 at some point. Okay, it has about 400 hours on it, but it's got a good setup, right? It's got everything that I would look for in this model, which are not all standard features. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but the quick attach bucket, I know some of you out there are gonna say, yeah, it's standard, it comes with it. It doesn't, all right? I've passed up a boatload of this model here because they had a pinned bucket, so maybe your dealer won't sell it without a pinned bucket which is really good. That's a really smart move by your dealer, but make sure you get that quick attach on there, all right? It's got the new and improved Swift Tatch. I thought it said it on here, maybe it doesn't, but I think it's called the Swift Tatch Loader with, you know, you, you don't have to get off the driver's seat to be able to take this whole contraption off. A few years ago, I talked about this because there's so many components and bars and brackets and everything else that can get bent and tweaked. I've started to hear folks that have had issues with that system not working well, and I have not even tried to take this one off. I'm probably not going to, but it's also got um, the single point hydraulic connection. I'm gonna tell you more about that here shortly. And then you've got the 60 inch mower deck. No, it's not a drive over. I've shown you guys how to take one of these on and off a long time ago. Uh, it's, it's a system that when I used to buy and sell a lot of tractors and some of them wouldn't have a mower deck on them, I'd, I'd ask the dealer to throw a, a deck on and over and over again, they said, no, don't get that drive over kind of auto connect system, sort of like what John Deere has. It's a very unrefined system. Hopefully they do something to improve that, but it's pretty, pretty janky. I'm not thrilled with this. So then of course you had the backhoe as well. This Kubota backhoe is a very nice backhoe. I put it on par all day with the 260B, um, except for the fact that you've got one seat, all right? So you have to swivel that seat around to get back here. You don't have a separate operator seat. I think that's a big step up from the, from the John Deere um, of what's included. So you do have a nice open operator platform though. Uh, cushions, stops and everything else all around there. It's very easy to take this backhoe on and off. And one thing, I get this question once a month, about this ROPS bar, okay? This ROPS bar is wider. This is a model that's specific to have a backhoe on it. So if you have a BX2380 or a 2680, this ROPS bar is gonna be more narrow, all right? And I don't think that you can add on the backhoe to that setup. Maybe you can, but you're, you're gonna be squished inside there as an operator even if you do. This is their backhoe specific model, the BX23S. Now, in fact, now that I think about it, this one here, it's a good time to show you this. You can actually fit this canopy, the Rhino Hide canopy, right in between the Ross bar. Look at that. Rhino Hide, go to tractorcanopy.com to get your Rhino Hide canopy. Tough as nails, lightweight. You can see how lightweight that is. Comes on and off super easy for trailering, for storage, for whatever you need. It's made out of that bed liner material that goes in like a, a drop in bed liner in a truck. So, super tough material. Check it out, tractorcanopy.com. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, so enough of that stuff. Let's get to the interesting points, all right? So number one, I wanted to throw on some VersaTurf tires, all right? So these are, what was it, 26, 12, 12s in the back and 18 by 8.5, yep, on the fronts, okay? So standard, just like what, like 1025 would have on there, very common for a, a subcompact tract in this size. Great fit, you don't have to change the wheels out at all. What I found out, and I have no idea why, because this hasn't happened on any other tractor that I know about, is what these tires on here, when you have a, a, when you're fully turning one way or the other, they're hitting the mower deck. 
that's just absolutely pointless. And you don't know until you already have them on there and you've already paid for them and everything else. So that's frustration number one. So I have no interest in mowing with this because if it's kind of grabbing that mower deck as you're turning, that's just super annoying. And so the other big thing and why I've turned down a lot of Kubotas in the past is I honestly, I don't think that they hold up to to tough use very well at all. And I think this is a pretty good example. It's got not even 400 hours on it. You can take a look at the bucket. It's all wrinkled on the sides. The mower deck was bent in. So we straightened that back out. Um, there was a, a bolt that was sheared off in one of the hubs and we were putting wheel spacers on this thing. It shows just the heavy wear getting on and off on both these corners. You know, all the dents show up and everything else. And I get a lot of this stuff is cosmetic, but some of it's functional. When you, when you bend in this, you know, the side shrouds on the mower deck, you, you can't mow with it, right? These these buckets at some point are going to be wonky and, and uneven on the bottom side. You know, some of the other stuff is just, you want your 20 plus thousand dollar machine to look good, don't you? But on top of that, maybe the most painful thing of all is that this was sitting on a concrete floor at my shop and it was drip, drip, drip. I mean, you call it old leaky. It had a leak out of that single point hydraulic connector, which is very problematic with Kubota. It had another leak from this joystick here at the base of where that's connected again a fairly common problem and it had a front axle leak and to top it all off these leaks actually required three different trips into the dealer to have it actually corrected and this dealer here is not who i bought it from and i don't really even think that matters i think it it's just the point of maybe number one how finicky this machine is in general and and number two just 400 hours it's got leaks in three different locations, hydraulic leaks. I mean, there's no engine leaks, which is a good thing, but it's just, the more I have it, the more I look at it, every time I look at it, it's just, you know, I notice this hood latch here, this this knob's broken off now. There's something missing out of this hole that's in the in the fender there. It's, it's exhausting with this machine. All right, and so I don't want to use the mower deck, right, because of this tire turning interference issue. The bucket itself for capacity is the least amount of capacity out of any other tractor that I own. And so it's like, why would I want to use the smallest capacity bucket, the smallest size, the smallest lift capacity, the smallest height reach, you name it, when I have all these other machines. So, you know, it's got that limitation there. The backhoe, well, I just, I don't have a lot of need for a backhoe. I'm be perfectly honest with you there. I, I own an actual mini excavator and I've put I think like 10 hours on it or something since I've owned it in, in a year I don't I just don't use backhoes very often and, and I have property I have projects all the time but I just don't have backhoe projects and I don't know maybe there's something wrong with me and so anyway you know I don't mean to be doom and gloom but it's like I've had this tractor for so long I've done nothing with it I have no desire to use it I wanted to make videos with it showing attachments that go on it you know like the stump bucket like the paddle forks like snow pushers everything that we sell to, to show it to you guys because that's how you sometimes need to visualize it is that well if you don't see it on here then you think it might not work but you know there's a there's thousands of Kubota BX tractor owners out there that are very happy and and I think you should be you know I think in in a vacuum without anything else to have sitting around it to use it's a it's a good machine but when you have other machines even other machines in its class like the 1025R there's just there's not a single time when I would ever want to go use this tractor. Now, before you think I'm completely John Deere biased, I'm not, all right? I did a video last winter, I think it was, head-to-head -head competition from the subcompacts all the way up through the compact class into the utility class, and Kubota basically torched John Deere overall in that comparison that I did based on my own views on what I would pick. So the BX is just one of those couple categories that I'm, I'm going to choose a John Deere 1025R essentially every time. Check that video out if you want to see it. A couple things I really do like about this tractor though, I love the loader joystick. I love how the loader operates, all right? I, I, I may even prefer it over the John Deere uh, on, on a, you know, just the loader operation kind of functionality of the whole thing. Uh, I do really like that. I like the seat, it's a very comfortable seat on there. I like the functionality of the backhoe. I think it's very smooth to operate and I think a lot of owners out there would agree. I like the universal, you know, the skid steer quick attach offering for the bucket. Um, a, lot of, a lot of attachments out there for that. And uh, Chris chimed in, he likes the color orange. So, you know, there's that too. Okay, so on that note, I wanna give you a quick rundown of all the attachments, the right size stuff that works with the Kubota BX, if that's the tractor that you own or that you're getting. 
All right, so this is a subcompact tractor. It's not a big old tank, so you gotta size this stuff accordingly. So the mini stump bucket is the one that you want, not the HD stump bucket. The ultralight pallet forks, not the standard duty. So these are lightweight attachments, give you more capacity with the loader. Um, a 54 inch snow pusher, okay, the smallest snow pusher they make, or a 60 inch blade, because you angle a blade and it narrows it up a little bit. The WorkSaver mini grapple is a perfect fit. It's very lightweight, only about 200 pounds. So you can get um, either a third function from Kubota or a Summit Hydro. Hydraulix is selling um, hydro aftermarket DIY solutions that you can get for this tractor as well. With them, you can save 5% with code GWT. Uh, moving on here, uh, the newer versions of the BX are going to have a different grill guard that's on here, and you can get an improved version of that from 511 Designs. Uh, again, another discount club member, 5% off code GWT. Well, I might as well keep this on a roll. There are borer wheel spacers that we installed on here, I think inch and a half or two inch spacers all around, Chris, I can't remember. Um, we did those, did a whole video on it. So Bora, um, you can get those from them. They're a channel sponsor as well. All right, now talking about the three point hitch. All right, so um, just for your information, you do have to take off the three point arms to install the backhoe. So you take the backhoe off, put the three point arms on. Not a, not a terrible process, but just making you aware of that. So uh, let's see, most of this stuff's gonna be 48 inches wide that you use on this machine. Okay, 48 inch box blade, 48 inch land plane, 60 inch rear blade. Again, just like the front blade, you angle those. Um, and so once you angle it, it narrows it up and you wanna make sure you cover your, your, out, your, well, your whole path, all right? So um, a 60 inch landscape rake, again, cause you can angle that too, not much of a load there. 60 inch to Thatcher uh, would be really good for that. Um, I was going with something there. 48 inch tiller, that's what you wanna have on here. Don't even think about a 60 inch, 48 inch brush hog. Now, flail mower, it's a different animal. You can get up to a 62, uh, the largest funny top series on there. You're gonna be okay with that. Let me pull up the website here cause I'm sure I'm, I'm forgetting some attachments. I wanna make sure I tell you guys as much as I can. Okay, got it, got it pulled up now. So Spico quick hitch, of course, that's, that's one of our most popular attachments. It, it goes on your three point hitch and, and makes just the connection process to everything else a lot easier. Uh, we do have actually, while well, I'm thinking about it, black wheel weights, okay? 70 pound black wheel weights that go right in there. You can always grab a, a can of a spray paint and paint those orange if you want to. A 48 inch core plug aerator, great fit for this machine. A 48 inch disc, a 60 inch cultipacker. The three shank plow, those are all good fits for this. Uh, the 54 inch pull type blower is a really good option on the backside too. Uh, the BX36S chipper if you want something for chipping or the 32M for a chipper shredder. Well, I think you get the idea. A lot of options. You're gonna be in the smaller size range and that's that's okay. You're buying a smaller tractor. You just wanna get the stuff that fits. If you go too big, you're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna sit there, spin your wheels and not get the jobs done. It's gonna be less efficient instead of more efficient. Trust me, I've tried it and it doesn't work. Oh, and then a big one, a big one. If you don't have the backhoe on, the backhoe is really good ballast weight, right? But we are big on safety. That's why, that's why we have Bora as a sponsor and RimGuard okay, is our channel sponsor. RimGuard is liquid ballast inside there. But, you know, I don't have an exact answer on, on the Kubota BX, uh, but it's similar enough to the John Deere 1025R, which needs 1,050 pounds minimum of counterweight or ballast weight when you're using your front end loader. So, given that this tractor doesn't lift up quite as much, you probably don't need quite as much ballast weight, but if you don't have the back on, or maybe you have a BX 2380 or 2680 or one of the other Kubota BXs, get yourself a lot of counterweight back here, all right? Get yourself some liquid ballast, wheel weights, and we sell something called a Versa Bracket and Weight Bundle, all right? And so it's a, it's a weight bracket, holds a chainsaw, uh, two inch receiver on it, so like a trailer mover. Um, a new version is gonna have a gooseneck uh, hitch, kind of mover thing on it too, chain hooks, all that kind of stuff. So you get that, eight suitcase weights, gets you a lot of battles way back here on the three-point hitch where it's most effective too. Alrighty folks, so there you have it. That's kind of my take on it, owning a machine for a year and a half, having less than an hour put on it, a lot of different reasons, maybe kind of a perfect storm, that's how things go. Again, in a vacuum, in a bubble, if this is the only machine I had, I would use it all the time, right? But I have all these other machines out here, some bigger, some the same class, and it's, Something's gotta give and this one gives. So I was probably a little harsher on it than I needed to be. But on that note, if you are looking for something for your tractor, we'd love to help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. If you enjoyed today's video, you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.